Oh, yep, that worked. <laughs> Goodness me. <laughs> We are in New Zealand, an incredible country at the edge of the earth with no shortage of natural beauty and no shortage of hunting opportunities. I've been here with my wife Nicole for a few weeks, exploring the incredible landscapes on display and taking every opportunity I can to head deep into the wilderness and get some hunting done. In the previous episode, we met up with Jake Greenlaw, a fellow YouTuber with the channel Chase the Wild, and we made our way up into the hills to take out some invasive wallabies with the hard-hitting 6mm Creedmoor. From a perfectly positioned sniper spot on a hilltop, we absolutely let rip and were able to rack up a great tally, smoking every wallaby within range. If you haven't seen this episode, you really should. We now find ourselves right here on the hill with the lights starting to dim and we'll be continuing where we left off, taking a couple last light opportunities before heading down the hill to set up the thermal for another few hours of carnage. You tell me when you're ready. I'm ready. All right. Yes. I'm on a roll today. <laughs> it's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. And what conditions there? No wind, nothing. Just hold on and shoot. No rear bag needed, solid bar pod, mm. heavy rifle. Sucks to carry up the <laughs> up the hills, but uh, you, you're grateful for the, for the weight when you're up here. You are, eh? Most definitely. I definitely find that. The wallabies are showing no sign of thinning out and we could stay here and continue blitzing them, but we need to get back down before we lose light entirely. So we reluctantly start packing up. I feel bad shooting paper, like wasting my Wasting my ammo shooting paper when yeah. you when you can do this. Yeah, <laughs> I am um, fire form brass doing it. Like oh yeah, why, like people who shoot them into banks and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like no. Yeah, right. Easy walk down the track. Easy walk home. Good meal. Come out with a film. Yeah, twenty two. Sounds like a plan. We had a decent descent in front of us, but make our way steadily down, stopping every now and again to glass for wallabies. We spot one along a fence line just as we're nearing the bottom of the valley and the opportunity is just too good to pass up. <laughs> well, definitely wouldn't have got that on the trigger cam because this position shooting off my knee like this, the rifle just recoils way too much, but yeah. Another one down. It's almost too many now. Gotta save some for later. <laughs> <laughs> a short walk along the river and we've timed it to perfection. Reaching the hut just as we can't see our feet anymore. Right, tonight's menu is nachos with venison mince. I can't wait. You've earned it, that's for sure. <laughs> and we've got to fill the tank because we're going back out. Another 30, what do you reckon, mate? Something like that, hopefully. Yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> we probably overdid the food just a little bit, but we need all the energy we can get for the night that lies ahead. And once we refueled, it's time to feed the rifle too. This time we'll be leaving the 6 mil behind and taking the 22 long rifle. The perfect little tool for dispatching critters at close range with a the thermal. I like it. I like it a lot. <laughs> And the power button to make it go to sleep, I think you just press it and as soon as the counter turns I already up. see one there. Yeah, <laughs> really? Oh my word, it's like the first thing I've looked at. It? <laughs> How far away is it? Does it look like I it's don't know, it's pretty far. Well, this is a rangefinder one. So. Is it up there? It's in the bush now, it's gone. <laughs> we literally haven't even left the hut yet and we're ready. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. Well, we've just had an incredible evening shooting wallabies in the hills behind me here in New Zealand with Jake from Chase the Wild. And uh, we're about to go out again. We've just had a very filling nacho, <laughs> nachos dinner. I'm actually yeah. feeling a, a bit heavy, a bit too heavy to go up the mountain, but <laughs> we'll see how we go. Yeah. We've pulled out the 22 long rifle. We've got a thermal on top. So this is going to be a little bit different. We're going to probably be quite a bit closer to the wallabies this time around. Yeah. And uh, 
I think they're going to be everywhere. So yeah, I'm let's see how it goes. <clears throat> Fingers crossed we get uh, a good number down. But yeah, let's head out there and see what we can do, shall we? Let's do it. Yep. <laughs> Up the valley we head on foot with more or less the same strategy as before. Comb the riverbed for wallabies and then pick a route up the hill and drop as many as we can on the way up. My first opportunity comes in the form of a very close shot and this is bread and butter for the 22. First one down, probably about 10 meters away. <laughs> probably less. Probably less, that was crazy. First wallaby of tonight i won't say the first of the day because we <laughs> got a lot earlier but there you go I think uh, that's number 28 number 28 or something pretty decent size very happy with that from 10 from meters. like 10 meters maybe eight meters <laughs> yeah. um yeah jake told me i should be careful if it's facing front on not to shoot it in the, the head sometimes because with a rimfire especially around those non-hollow point bullets if you hit it in the nose it can deflect up and um, yeah. or just go in the jaw and just not put it down quickly. So I aimed a bit low, got him through the neck and see what more we can get, shall yeah, we? Let's do it. <laughs> Around the next corner, I end up shooting something very unexpected, a hedgehog. It feels weird, Gotta say, it feels strange shooting a hedgehog. Yep, awesome. Like you, you think of hedgehogs from children's books and stuff, but yeah. that is the reality of, of uh, hunting and pest control. Sometimes you have to take uh, emotion out of it they're invasive animals here and they they do cause damage and there's no natural predators so it's not like let's say in the UK where they come from where there's foxes that are preying on them and stuff like that where their numbers can be kept under control these guys I mean we've actually seen a few of them just on the short section of road so yeah that's just how it is um, and if we are doing a favor to the ecosystem in the area then even if it's like an animal that I'm not used to shooting I'm happy to be part of the solution so yep that's that's hunting and uh, it's one more down the valley that we're in is flanked on all sides by some pretty steep hills and we need to make our way up these hills to be able to cover the ground necessary to take out more wallabies not the easiest walk to do in the darkness but Jake's done it before and knows his way around the one that was less walking is slightly easier walking this one is a bit sharp and brutal to start but once you're up uh, it's just along and then down and then bed. We've got torches to help us find our way and Jake's got a thermal monocular to spot stuff and measure ranges. Thankfully this little rim fire is really light so I'm able to hold it up and scan around for movement without my arms getting tired. And soon we're in business. Nice. Run and run and die though. I pulled it slightly. No, you it, really good. it wasn't it wasn't the best uh, <clears throat> rest. position yeah. Shooting offhand, but I think next time I'll try sit down. This wasn't the cleanest shot, but we were able to get a bit closer and follow up. Nothing escaped the thermal. Okay, I'm very steady on that longer one, so okay. give it a try. There's one in the foreground just in case. It might run past. Hey, dude. It's turned out to be a very tranquil evening. Very little wind and the moon and stars playing hide and seek behind the clouds. I spot another wallaby about 50 yards away facing right towards me and I place the crosshairs right on his head. Oh yes. Oh, he's dead. Nice. So the field of view is a uh, nice and wide which is is actually what you want because in the darkness with no reference you want to be able to put it to your shoulder and find what you're shooting at mm. the only issue is especially when you don't have a really solid rest like you know like with the center fires you can kind of lie down and kind of take longer shots with these it's you, you see one you've got to stand up and shoot in this case i was able to lie down put this on my knee get relatively steady and he was close probably 50 50 yards, something like that, nice and close. Just kind of put oh the crosshairs yes. on his head and pull the trigger. Easy. But yeah, we're gonna, I think, especially with a rim fire, try and keep it as close as possible. Yeah. Um, it's, the, it's the best way to do it for sure. 
Yeah, they're quite a big animal, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, the, for rim fire, it's pretty for big. Fire, you get big rough. quarry. You don't want to. You don't want to hit anywhere lower than the chest. No, for sure. Jake spots another head poking out, and this one gets put down too. Oh yeah. As you can see, there isn't much work required from our side at this point. We basically just have to wait for them to show up, get into a stable shooting position, and let rip. And that just. Oh. Absolutely poleaxed them. Beautiful. Nice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Much easier shooting standing up. Rolling. Slash. Oh, yep. Yeah, that's, that's done it. You know, you were looking completely the different direction. Well, I saw me. what I thought was something far away but it was the top of his ear and then he stuck his head up and I'm like, damn, that's like <laughs> 25 meters. <laughs> well, I was looking that way. There's one over there, which popped its head. Yeah, there was one over there and then yeah. I saw this one on the left. You must have a massive oh, field everywhere. of view compared to me. Yeah, I do. This thing was close. It was like, yeah. right here. Yeah. Like even... We must have walked past, like we yeah. walked right up there. Yeah. Well, we are still making our way up this hill over here. It's nice and steep. My ankles are not quite used to this sort of uh, twisty, slippery terrain, but it's beautiful up here. We just, by the light of the moon, able to see the like some clouds rolling in between these mountains, almost at the same level as us, which is really cool. Um, yeah, we've been. I've had my eye glued to the thermal a lot of the time, but it's nice to get my eye off, let my eye adjust to the darkness, and be able to just see this moonlit view around us. Very cool. But yeah, I think we've got a little bit more uphill to go and then we're going to make a turn, start descending down a different valley and maybe get some more on the way down. The uphill shots are particularly difficult because it's impossible to get into a sitting position without rolling over backwards. Oh, but yeah. Jake's shoulder makes a great rest. We spot another one running up a hill and this is probably my best shot of the whole evening. Oh! Look at that. That was a good one. That is incredible. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, that was good. Perfect. Oh, that um, Best cloud. Best night, I think. Yeah, that was. <laughs> Look at the cloud now. Yeah. It's, it's a, little bit, right. a little bit concerning, actually. Yeah, we should probably get, get down. With a thick cloud rolling in, we make the call to start heading down the hill, but along the way, there's plenty more action. Oh, it's presenting well right now, yeah, isn't it? Is. Downhill shot. Okay, same hold. Yeah. Oh, it's just a bit down on the spot. Perfect. Oh, yep, that worked. Oh, that one. Meters or so. Goodness me. <laughs> Were you looking at a different one? No, no. I wasn't, but it was funny. Yeah, when there was one that was relatively close, probably like <laughs> 30, 40 meters. So I was getting ready on that. <laughs> and then Jake said 15 meters, and I thought, that one's not 15. Looked a bit to the right, another one really close, got it in focus. Hit record. Yeah. Straight down. But the fog's rolling in now, and the fog is making the Making it hard to see anything with both with our eyes and with our torches and and with the thermal, so we should probably be making our way down. Yeah, we're not too far from going down now. Yeah, but yeah, we've, I mean, this has been very fruitful up here. We're seeing tons at the moment, so I'm sure we'll run into a few more on the way down. Just as we feel we might be getting a little lost, the hut appears out of nowhere. Turns out Jake really does know this place like the back of his hand. Well, it's almost 11 p.m. Uh, we spent a good few hours up in the mountains, uh, hiking up and down and shooting lots of wallabies, uh, and it was awesome. So once again, big thanks to, to Jake for taking us out here. It's been an amazing experience. Um, you know, I have such fond memories of going to Patagonia in 2018 and shooting beavers and always look back and then think like, that was an amazing experience. And this has been something that is quite similar. Interesting species, um, new country, somewhere in the far corners of the earth um, and just good people so yeah awesome experience 
but the, the fog is coming now and we can't see very much so we've called it a night come back to the hut and we've put the coffee on uh, to, end, to end the night before we head to bed so once again thanks for watching uh, make sure to check out Jake's channel down below as well and uh, yeah we'll see you next time in the next episode, we'll be meeting up with the guys from Gun City, the New Zealand distributors for Element Optics, setting up a rifle with a Helix HD and heading to a different part of the country in a helicopter to hunt Arapawa rams. A species with a very interesting backstory and a solid set of horns. This one is going to be truly epic, not just for the views from the chopper, but also what we were able to achieve with a factory rifle and a PDC reticle. Make sure to subscribe and we'll see you then. Thanks for watching.